Say with me, being a blessing. Say it again. Say, being a blessing. That's what I'm going to share with you tonight. Say, being a blessing. You're going to become a blessing. Now, let's go to Genesis 12. All right, that's my message tonight. All right, now, we're going to read from verse 1, and the Bible here says, Now the Lord has said to Abram, Get out of your country, from your family, from your father's house, to a land that I will show you. This is deep. I will make you a great nation. You, you, you actually barren, eh? Your wife doesn't have a child, and God says, I will make you into a what? A great nation. It's not for fun. It's not for show off. There's a reason why God's talking about. The reason why. Yes, see, see it. I'll make you a great nation. I will bless you. And make your name great. And you shall be a blessing. The reason why I shall make your name great. The reason why I shall bless you is because I want you to become a blessing. If you want God to make you become a blessing, then you must be willing. Hello? You must be willing. Otherwise, you're not. Because most people, they just end where they need a blessing. So right now, they're like, prophet, I need a prayer. Oh, prophet, my thing's not moving. Oh, prophet, you end there. Hello? Wow. Are you understanding? Yes. Now, let's go back there on the scripture. I will make you a great nation. Mm -hmm. I will bless you mm -hmm. and make your name great. Mm -hmm. And you shall be a blessing. Mm -hmm. Verse 3. See that. In verse, it says what? I will bless those who bless you. Oh. I will curse him who curse you. And in you, all the families of the earth shall be blessed. Why shall God curse people who curse you? Because all people in the world, all families in the world shall be blessed through you. So anyone who shall touch you, I shall touch. Can you imagine God is saying the whole ECG church shall be blessed through you? Do you think somebody can curse you? No. God says, I will curse anyone who wants to curse you. Because the whole church shall be blessed because of you. Can you imagine God wants to release this anointing to somebody tonight? Where God says, I want to make someone become a blessing. Somebody shall become a blessing. And this is Abraham. Abraham is like, what are you talking about? Can, can you imagine? Can you, you, you may not know the story of Abraham because in the Bible, the whole story is not written. When you check in the Hebrew Bible, the story is properly written. That story there, if you read it, it just starts from, and the God is said to Abraham, leave your father, leave your mother. Okay? Just say, and God. But what, did, what happened? Why did God say, leave your father? In Hebrew Bible, the Bible speaks, it talks about the father of Abraham. He was an idol worshiper. And what happened was that he refused to worship idols. Because God appeared to him. Did you hear me? So this guy, the father, didn't love him. There was a temple where he went. He wanted the, 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 the son Abraham to go and worship and bow. And Abraham refused. So they took him. Because if he refused to bow to a God called Nimrod. And I think you know the story of Nimrod. How, how they were worshiping Nimrod. And how he began the worship. When he was building the tower of Babel. So now, because Abraham refused, they said, we'll burn you into fire. So they took Abraham and put fire and they threw him in the fire. And the man never got bent. 
And that was a miracle that made Lot to say, your God shall be my God. So Lot began to follow Abraham. Then because he made that decision, God said to Abraham, as you are leaving, take Lot along. Sometimes God will make certain people follow a man of God. It's not like we, we, I made it to say, you follow me, you follow me. The Bible says, Abraham, he said, leave with your wife and with your cousin Lot. Out of all people, not, not your other brothers. Take Lot. You didn't hear me. Take who? Are you, are you understanding? So God said, now, I have seen how you have suffered. But now I want to make you to become what? A blessing. He says, through you, all nations shall be blessed. And God says, I will make you into what? A blessing. I will turn you into a country. And that country is what now? It's Israel. Are, are you hearing me? Yes. See, I, will, I, will, I will turn you into a country. And that country now is Israel. Right now, as we're talking, there's a country called Israel. Right now. The whole world, all Christians go to Israel to fulfill the prophecy through you. All families of the earth shall be blessed. When God makes you a blessing, God is talking about nation, not what about your family. Right now, your family is the misery. Your family needs deliverance, help. There's nobody to, in fact, it's actually you who needs help. This is embarrassing. God wants you to become a blessing that even your aunties, your cousins, your brothers should be blessed through you. Amen. Somebody raise up your hands and say, I receive the blessing. Are you getting this message? Through you. Somebody say, oh Lord, make me into a blessing. Hallelujah. How does God feel? Can you imagine? How does God feel when he sees that, ah, I know this woman wants help, but I got a ministry here that I need her to be a blessing in my church. How does God feel when he says, I need this man to be a blessing in the church? And you're not. And all you want is a blessing in your life. And God said, come on. I know you need a blessing, but I want you to become a blessing. Did you hear that? Yes. God says what? He wants you to be a blessing. But you're still operating from the low level. Where you need actually a blessing yourself. That's the lowest level. In the, if you see people like that. They're operating from the lowest level. So what God will do. He will bless other people. To bless them. Since you need a blessing. God will be blessing other people. So that you become a beneficiary. And you'll be testifying, hallelujah. Ah, two days ago, somebody gave me $2,000. You are mad. You are supposed to be the one being a blessing, giving people $2,000. Now, let's go to James chapter 4. Let's check the Bible there. Let's see what the Bible says from verse 1. James chapter 4, from verse 1. Okay, we, we have quarrels and fights in homes, in families. Why, where are those battles coming from in families, in homes, in relationships? Where are they coming from? The Bible says, and, and, and there's a question and there's an answer. Let's go over there quickly. Where do wars and fights come from among you? Do they not come from your desires for pleasure? That war in your members? Mm -hmm. You lust and do not have. You murder and covet and cannot obtain. You fight and war, yet you do not have because you do not ask. Wait, 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 wait. Uh -huh, uh -huh, uh -huh. Verse 3. You ask and do not receive because you ask amiss that you may spend it on your pleasures. Did you just hear that statement? He says the reason why you are not receiving, it is because all you need is to get a miracle to use it for you. He says, ah, uh, Say, oh, you're not going to get it. You want to get it. Somebody told me, he said, Papa, I need impartation. I said, impartation for what? He said, I want to prophesy. I want, I want the branch to grow. 
I said, hey, there is no scripture in the Bible which says I shall make you prophesy so that branches can grow. I said, you, you need, you need a, a gift. You need, you need, you need impartation. It's a good thing, but in a, in a wrong reason. You need it so that you can shine. It doesn't work all. This is not, trust you me, it's not, it's not a badge of promotion. Prophecy, it's not a badge. Like, oh, now you are matured in the spirit. You be, no. It is a gift to point out, to show people Christ. Not to show people you. Did you hear me? If you are not matured, it will point at you. This is not a gift to point at you or to point the address of your church. It is a gift that must point Christ. People to look at Christ. Not to look at you. It says you ask and you don't receive. Because you ask amiss. The word amiss is the word wrong. Motives. Wrong motives. Selfish purposes. You need it for you. From verse 1 of James chapter 4. In New Living Translation. It says this. Check it out. It says, what is causing the quarrels and fights among you? A simple question. If you're watching me now. In your relationship. In your marriages. In your families. Why are you fighting? Why? Why those fights? What is causing? There's a question. What is causing these things? Now, 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 check this. Check this. In verse, what is causing the quarrels and fights among you? Don't they come from the evil desires at war within you? You want what you don't have. Uh, <laughs> I like this. So you scheme and kill to get it. He says, you, if you even go as far as maybe let me do this. Maybe I need, I need a breakthrough. I, let even me do this. No. He says, so you scheme and to, he says, you are jealous of what others have. But you can't get it. So you fight and wage war to take it away from them. Yet you don't have what you want because you don't ask God for it. Three. And even when you ask, you don't get it because your motives are all wrong. You want only what will give you pleasure. It says, don't you know that friendship with the world is being an enemy with God? Ah, did you hear that? Now, listen to this. Listen to this. Are you following? There is one thing that I want you to get here. That is very important. So many people are praying right now. Father, I need a miracle. Father, I need this to happen. Abraham was praying the same prayer. And he wasn't getting it. Because God was saying, no. You don't need a child. I want to do something through you. And he wasn't getting it. No, did you hear that? Yes. Hannah. The Bible says it was not the devil that closed her womb. The Bible says God closed her womb. Until she said, if you give me a baby, I'll give this child to you. God said, aha. I wanted to hear that statement. Are you here, somebody? In the first Samuel chapter 3, verse 1, see what happened. Meanwhile, the boy Samuel saved the Lord by assisting Eli. Now, in those days, messages from the Lord were very rare. And visions were quite uncommon. Did you see that? The Bible says, now, if you read from verse 3, up, up to verse six, 15, you see that God came down and he said to, to the boy, Samuel! And God now gave a calling. Let me show you a very important aspect here. I like this. Now, I want you to see from verse 20. Now, oh, let's say from verse 19. Okay? As Samuel grew up, the Lord was with him. 
and everything Samuel said proved to be reliable. This is the same boy who was not being born until the mother said, What? God, if he is born, I'll give him to you. Check now. It wasn't about the woman now. Look, look what God had in mind. See the scripture, verse 20. And all Israel, all Israel from Dan in the north of Bathsheba and in the south knew that Samuel was confirmed as a prophet of the Lord. It was not about Hannah. It was about Israel. What you're looking for, why it's not coming? It is not about you. It's about the church. And God is quiet until you say, oh Lord, now, if you give me this miracle, ha, I'll be a blessing in the church. God will be like, aha, now you're talking, come, come get it. I don't know if you're hearing me. Tell the neighbor next to you, if you have a neighbor next to you, say, are you a blessing or you want to be blessed? Are you a blessing or you want to be blessed? Uh -huh. What are they saying? They want a blessed anointing or a blessing anointing? What do they need? They, they, they want to be blessed or they want to be a blessing? Are you following? And God said, now, Hannah, Hannah, come forward. And she was in the temple. Can you imagine? Look at Abraham. Abraham every day was making prayer. Oh, Lord, I need a child. Oh, Lord, I need a child. Oh, Lord, I need a child. Until God said, uh, okay, go out. So he walked out. He said, look up. So what do you see? He said, I see stars. He said, uh-huh. He says, those stars, can you number them? He said, no. He said, that's how your children will be. Then he said, there will be a time. They will go to a far land in Egypt where they shall be slaves. And when they shall come back from there, I shall make them into a country. And I will give them this. God said to Abraham, and he has no baby. God was saying this again and again because he wanted this first to be well understood with Abraham. Otherwise, the child Abraham would have, he would take that child for granted. Until when the child was born, God wanted to see and prove if that was in the mind of Abraham. He said, now, go and sacrifice him to me. To see if Abraham understood that it wasn't his child. When he took the child for sacrifice, God said, aha, now I know. He says, eh, eh, Abraham, leave. You see that animal, kill that animal, leave my child alone. There are going to be businesses that God will begin to give to people tonight. Opportunities and doors which God will begin to open for people who are hearing me right now. Not because God wants to give them. But because God is releasing a blessing anointing upon you right this moment. And you shall become a blessing. Receive in the name of Jesus. Like that woman. She had little food in the house. And, and God spoke to her. He said, give that food to my prophet. And she behaved like she didn't hear God speaking. So when Abraham came, I mean when Elijah came into her house, he said, hey woman, the Lord told me to come to you. And that he told you that you must do the food for me. The woman behaved like she knows nothing. She said, ah. He said, the only food I have right now is it for me and for my child. And when we eat, we die. He said, I don't care. But you're going to do that food for me. God wanted her to be what? A blessing. You, you will do that food for me. He said, ah, oh, man of God, what are you talking about? The man of God said, I'm telling you now. You are giving me that food. Spiritual things will never be understood. That woman, she didn't even know that she was, she had graduated from being a blessed to being what? A blessing. She was expecting 
that now people begin to come with what? Things to say, we have come with a donation to you, woman. We have come with this for you. We have come with this. Not knowing God is turning things around. When she takes that food and give, the food will not finish. When she takes the food and give, the food will not finish. She was now into a level of what? Of a blessing. And when she cooked the food and gave the prophet, there was more. She cooked for herself, there was more. She said, hey, if Elijah tried to say, ah, now I'm leaving, hey, 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 don't go. God is speaking to me now that I must cook again for you. <laughs> and she cooks again, she gives the prophet. And what happens? There is more. So she has graduated from looking for a blessing, someone to bless her into becoming what? A blessing herself. I want you to get this anointing tonight. You will be so shocked how you become all of a sudden you remove money in the account is still there. After spending, you do this, you do this, more money is coming. When you get into that level, then you have gotten into a level of becoming a blessing. Who wants to become a blessing? I want to see a hand now. Anybody who says, Prophet, I want to become a blessing. Some of the things people want right now is just for them. Like, I need a miracle. I need a job. I need a business. I need, for what? They have no answer. The Bible says you pray and you don't receive because you need it to spend it just for your pleasure. So Abraham kept on praying for a baby and there was no child. There was no child. There was no child. Right now there's somebody praying for a miracle. There's no miracle. Until today, they have been praying for years. God is silent. There is silence. Because God is seeing other people. He said, you know what? Until you know my heart towards what you are looking for. So the Bible said, God closed the womb of Hannah. It was not the devil. It was God. Do you know the wife of Isaac? The Bible says, and God closed her womb. Are you understanding what I'm saying? How do we know it was God who closed the womb of Abraham's wife? God himself came to, to, to the wife and he said, within you there are two nations. It wasn't about you having kids. No. And she's shocked. She's like, oh, what, what are you talking about? Isaac had made a prayer. Isaac had made a prayer. Are you hearing me? Isaac had made what? A prayer. And God said, within you, within you, there are two what? Nations. God was not talking about the babies. It's not about you to have this miracle. It is about me. I have a plan. Right now, God sees millions around you. But until you know that they are for a purpose, God will not release them at all. Until you know that you are a millionaire for the kingdom. God will still hold this money until you realize the purpose. And God will say, now I can give it to you. You know what God said to Jacob? Same thing. God said, what's your name? He said, I'm Jacob. He said, no, 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 no. You're a country. Your name is Israel. The guy was looking upon himself. No wonder he struggled the whole night with an angel. He was so obsessed with a blessing. When he was leaving the father, he stole a blessing. He missed an angel. He says, until you bless me. Ah, what is wrong with you? What is your name? He said, ah, that's a problem. You don't know why. You are a what? You are a nation. Your name is Israel. He said, ah, really? He didn't even realize. Are you hearing me? Look at yourself on the mirror and say, you are a blessing. Tell yourself, go in the mirror and say, hey, you. My prophet told me to tell you, you are a blessing. God is seeing nations. Are you hearing me, somebody? I refuse to operate from a low level. I operate from the mountaintop. I am a blessing. Say loud, I am a blessing. So I refuse to operate from the bottom. 
Do you know in chapter 12, are you hearing me? God says to Abraham, you shall become what? A blessing. In chapter 13, he becomes a billionaire. In chapter 14, another king from Edom came with gold, money. He says to Abraham, I have come to bless you. Abraham said, no, 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 no. He said, take your money away. You can't bless me. You can't. I am the one who must be what? A blessing. So he turned like, there was a king here, and there was Melchizedek here. And he turned like this, and looked upon Melchizedek. And said, Melchizedek, oh, the high priest of almost high God, I brought you money. And he took money and gave Melchizedek. You didn't even hear me. You didn't even hear me. The guy refused the money. Check it. In chapter 14, the guy refused the money from the king of Edom. The king brought money in, in horse, using horses, chariots. He says, Abraham, I've come to give you money, to bless you. Abraham said, no, I have moved from that level. Yeah. The Bible said he was reaching God. And then somebody came with a lot of things. I want to bless you. He said, no, 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 no. The Bible says the same thing. In chapter 14, right there. He turned to a man of God. Abraham turned to a man of God and said, Oh, the priest of Almost High. He said, I have brought you money. He brought tithe. And he gave everything. Are you hearing me? In verse 23, check it out. Verse 23 of Genesis 14. What does the Bible say? Let's start from verse 22 for someone to understand it properly. You see that? And let's start from verse 18. And Melchizedek, the king of Salem, and the priest of God most high, brought Abram some bread and wine. Melchizedek blessed Abram with this blessing. Blessed be Abram by God most high, creator of heaven and earth. And blessed be God most high, who has defeated your enemies for you. Then Abram gave Melchizedek a tenth of all the goods he had recovered. The king of Sodom said to Abram, Give back my people who were captured, but you may keep for yourselves all the goods you have recovered. Abram replied to the king of Sodom, I solemnly swear to the Lord, God most high, creator of heaven and earth, that I will not take so much as a single thread or sand or throne from what belongs to you. Otherwise, you might say, I am the one who made Abraham rich. The man said, I will not get anything from you because you will say you made me rich. The guy just gave money to Melchizedek. He said, no, 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 no. I'll give money to the man of God. He says, me, I'm a blessing. Amen. Some of some a blessing. Amen. Can you imagine, you, he had just gone to Salem. Abraham went to Salem. Salem is now Jerusalem. To meet a man of God and bless him. Him, he has gone to bless a man of God. On the way, another guy wants to bless him. He says, uh, uh, you will say you bless, you made me rich. But guess what? You have to be willing. To see what the Lord is seeing. God has nations. God has a lot of people that he wants to touch through you. God has his church. He wants you to become a solution in his church. And until you begin to see that, may your company become a blessing. May your CV make you become a blessing. May your career make you become a blessing. I decree in the name of Jesus Christ. Whatever you're planning this year, it shall become fruitful. You shall become a blessing. You shall become a blessing. You shall become a blessing. Receive in the name of Jesus.